We are here today to help pass a pay equity bill where women who are doing the same job as men get paid the same amount. This bill has been in the legislature for years and for some unknown reason, well, we can imagine what the reasons are, it has not passed. It is time for women to step forward and start fighting for their own right to be considered citizens as people, not second class citizens. Our lobby day, we have an equal pay lobby day every day, every year, and uh, we also are having our Senate vote this afternoon around 2 p.m. So we will all be adjourning to the Senate following lunch. And we had a wonderful lunch and reception. Governor John Bell Edwards was our keynote speaker. We also had flying in from Washington, D.C., Deputy Secretary Christopher Liu of the U.S. Department of Labor. And we had our legislative sponsors of our equal pay and minimum wage legislation that also spoke to us. So it's a very exciting and very informative day. The best lobby day we've, we've had. Welcome, everyone. My name is Deborah Frieda, and I'm the state president for the American Association of University Women. I'd like to welcome everyone today here on Equal Pay Day. And I love seeing the sea of red, and so excited that everyone has come out for the advocacy for women. And as you know, today, Equal Pay Day, April 12th, is the day into 2016 that women have to work in order to equal the wages that men earned in 2015. So we've got a long way to go. Uh, Louisiana has the largest wage gap in the United States. We are at the very bottom. And so with this legislative session, we hope to change that. So thank you all for coming out, and we really appreciate you being here for a day of advocacy. I'd like to now introduce to you uh, Camille Moran, our state public policy chair. Camille is a longtime advocate for equal pay and women's rights, and we're very happy to have her um, speak at this time. So please welcome Camille Moran. It is my pleasure now to introduce a man that you are all well acquainted with. Own, the only way to describe this wonderful man is he's a loving husband, father, public servant, veteran, man of religion, small business, our governor, John Bell Edwards. John Bell Edwards served as state representative for District 72 in the Louisiana North Shore region up until this year. I should say last November when we all helped get him elected. He is a 1988 Dean's List graduate of the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. While at West Point, he was chosen by his classmates as vice chair of the Honor Committee in charge of investigations. After eight years of active duty with the U.S. Army as an Airborne Ranger, culminating with the command of a rifle company in 82nd Airborne Division. I'm sure y'all have heard about the 82nd Airborne, a very, very important division. That was at Fort Bragg, and then he went on to graduate Order of the Corps from Louisiana State University, LSU, Paul M. A. Bear Law Center. He's also a trial lawyer. From the heart of Louisiana, John Bell, his friends and family know, excelled in high school athletics, football and baseball, and graduated as valedictorian of his Amit High School class. As one of eight children from a family long dedicated to public service, John Bell carries on the family tradition. With a father who was the elected sheriff of Tangipahoa Parish, the Edwards have four generations of Tangipahoans in their family lineage, with John Bell's brother, Daniel, currently serving as a sheriff. John Bell learned the importance of public service at an early age. His Catholic upbringing and strong family ties have shaped his commitments to his own community, his faith, and his family. John Bell's mother taught him both compassion and dem to demonstrate as a legislator and his belief in the power of prayer. Meanwhile, his family credits his father with ensuring that John Bell carefully considers all sides of an issue before making difficult decisions on behalf of his constituents. And I can tell you for a fact that that is true. This compassion and good judgment, coupled with his ability to understand the details of legislation, which indeed he does, has made him a force to be reckoned with among his colleagues in the legislature, indeed. 
John Bell is married to his <coughs> high school sweetheart, a very lovely woman, the former Donna Hutto, and they live in Roseland, Louisiana, in a meat parish with their three children, Samantha, Sarah Ellen, and John Miller. Donna is a public school teacher, or she was, before becoming first lady. And then John Bell, as I said, had practiced law before that. The Edwards family attends St. Helena Catholic Church in Amid. To sum it up in one sentence, you will not find a more ardent equal pay and minimum wage and other women's rights issue than our very own governor, John Bell Edwards. Let us greet him. Thank you. We've been working extremely hard, as you have been, to answer questions from concerned lawmakers, from uh, business groups and, and other folks, uh, trying to convince them this is the right thing to do. Uh, and as you know, the concern you always hear, there's two or three of them, is, well, we've already got a law on the books to address this. Why do we need to do something else? Well, because we rank dead last. That's why. Uh, and then they say, well, you're just trying to create conditions under which you can sue us more often. I promise you, as a lawyer, as a plaintiff's trial lawyer, if I wanted to write a law that would now allow people to sue more often, this wouldn't be the way we would do it. You know, and there's every way in the world for the employers to protect themselves by simply acting responsibly when they're put on written notice that, that the employee believes that there's a violation uh, in place. So. Uh, we, we are working extremely hard to, to answer those criticisms, make sure people know this is a fair and balanced approach. But at the end of the day, it's got to be an effective approach. Otherwise, we're all wasting our time. Because the goal isn't to pass a bill. The goal is to make sure women are paid the same as men. Uh, not just my daughters. Not just my daughters. Uh, and my wife, by the way, who happens to be here. Uh, so Donna, thank you for joining us. But for all women, it's incredibly important. And we gotta make sure people understand that this truly is about valuing families. And for those lawmakers who talk about family values all the time, this gives them an opportunity to actually promote a policy that values families. And there is a difference. There is a difference. So it's incredibly important. I wanna thank Under Secretary Liu, who is down with us. Uh, today. He is from Washington. Uh, he is working for President Obama, and he's got some, uh, some things that he would like to share with you, um, I'm sure. And so I'm going to ask him to come forward and, and do that. But, but thank you so much for being here and for your work. Uh, as you all know, this is not something that's just a couple of weeks in the making. Uh, Felicia, Linda, I mean, this, this has been years. I've been watching you all here. I think I voted for equal pay the, on the floor of the House my first year. So I know it goes back uh, eight years. Uh, I know this is eight or nine years long in, in my own personal experience. And that's just too long. That's just, that, it just doesn't make sense. So let's, let's make today a, a great day. Uh, let's make sure that this bill ends up on my desk so that I can sign it into law right here with you all watching. Uh, and and I'm, I'm looking forward to doing that. And, you know, sometimes you have really tough decisions to make because the policy seems a little um, uncertain and the politics seems a little un uncertain. Well, the policy couldn't be better and the politics couldn't be stronger because 90% of the people in Louisiana agree with what we're trying to do. So there is no reason uh, to come up short. We will not come up short. We're going to make this happen uh, and, and celebrate for all of the people of Louisiana. And by the way, not just for the women, but for the children that those women are supporting. Uh, that's, that's what makes this critically important. And on occasion, there might be a man out there who's going to benefit <laughs> from this bill too, because it's not written uh, to protect women. It's written to protect employees. Uh, so you all know that. Under Secretary Louis, would you come and, and join us and, and share some of your thoughts? Thank you. Thank you, Governor, for having me. And thanks to all of you for the important work that you do. I love the color red. But I will say that, you know what, no one goes around and says happy equal pay day because today is the date on which women have earned enough money to make up for the pay gap that happened last year. And we all know that Louisiana has the widest pay gap of any of the 50 states, including the District of Columbia. So if we were actually marking the pay gap 
in Louisiana, it wouldn't be today. It would be even further down. And that's not acceptable. <laughs> this is not just a moral issue. It's an economic issue as well. And so while I am thrilled to be here with, with all of you, I'm thrilled to be here with the governor, I hope we can get rid of Equal Pay Day, because this issue should have been resolved a long time ago. And I want to applaud the governor for his wonderful leadership on this issue. He said this bill has gone through uh, the legislature here in Louisiana for many, many years. And while we are very, very hopeful and excited about the progress we may make today, think about all the women who have suffered during that period of time on what should have been an elementary issue. So on behalf of my boss, Secretary Tom Perez, on behalf of our collective bosses, the president, we are here to show our support for this issue. And we at the Department of Labor uh, think all the time about how we can help ensure that America wins this global competition that we are in. And in this global competition of the 21st century, we need to field a full team. And we're not fielding a full team right now. There are far too many people that are left on the sidelines, people either who don't have economic opportunities or who aren't sharing in the, pro the broad-based prosperity that we're trying to create in that country. And that not only includes veterans, people with disabilities, uh, young people, people from disadvantaged communities, it means the women who aren't participating fully because they aren't being paid fairly. And it's one of the reasons why we at the department continue to look at ways to increase the labor force participation of women, to provide them good job training opportunities, to provide them with paid leave opportunities to increase the minimum wage. And while uh, we are trying to do all of that at the national level, I don't need to tell you about the partisan gridlock that is in Washington right now. And it is one of the reasons why Secretary Perez, the President, and I spend so much time traveling around the country so that we can lift up wonderful state initiatives like what is happening right here and to give our support to innovative governors like Governor Edwards. And this is not just the pay gap that somebody might feel in a given month or a given year. Imagine what that does when this pay gap is compounded over the course of a lifetime. Uh, it is not surprising that women have substantially less retirement income than men. Retirement income for women ages 65 and older is 44% less than for men in that eight, same age demographic. And here's the really disturbing statistic. Women 75 years and older are almost twice as likely to live in poverty as men. In part, it's because of the lack of economic opportunities, and in part, it's because of the pay gap that they've experienced along the way. And so it is critical that we move forward on this issue. To me, this is such a common sense issue, uh, and it is incredible that there's been such resistance. As the governor said, look, we're not here to, to file lawsuits against companies. We just want women to be paid fairly. It's a very, very basic principle. And I know the governor ran for this office on the Pledge of Louisiana First. Uh, and there's nothing that I know the governor wants to be last in. And this is a very uh, disturbing statistic. And so the fact that he has made this a priority uh, speaks volumes to him. And I know that he said in his inaugural address that he wants to drive a current of change as mighty as the Mississippi. Uh, and today's action is an important first step in that journey. So I want to thank all the advocates here uh, for your hard work on this issue. I, I will have a chance to meet with some of the legislators who are supporting this initiative and to lend our support. Um, today is a historic day, and it could not have happened without all of you. So thank you very much. I began to um, actually draft the equal pay legislation back in 2005 when I was labor committee attorney here and um, drafted it for a number of members and drafted in every version we could think of. <laughs> you remember that? And uh, had so many advocates, but continued to fall, fall short. I think the difference this year, and I'm not just saying this because he's in the room, I think the major difference this year is that for the first time in eight years, we have a governor that supports equal pay for equal work. That's the difference. I told, I told them this was the first time I made you wait. <laughs> <laughs> when he was a legislator, I used to make him wait all the time. He, we had, what, 8 o'clock in the morning um, breakfast. He was like the chair of the Democratic caucus, and I was like, John, 8 o'clock in the morning, this is, this is hard on a woman. <laughs> but he was always as dedicated as he is now, and it's not just something he's doing as governor. Uh, in leading the Democratic caucus over the years, he has been a strong advocate for equal pay for women, and so I'm so encouraged 
uh, as he gave of his time and his service to testify in the Senate, I think it made a world of difference. I know it did. And to have someone so compassionate fighting for us, sometimes you get it to the table and it's just us. Well, because of his lovely wife, I know she has a large part to do with that. <laughs> we have males at the table. <laughs> yes. And uh, so, listen, uh, someone just asked me in an interview on my way up here. They said, what's so important and what message are we sending when we push equal pay for equal work? I said, it sends a broader message. And it sends a message that Louisiana is ready to receive companies and ready for economic development. And we're serious about what we do. You know? And, I, and, and what else I said is it sends a message that we're ready to take care of families and children because so many single mothers work and so many uh, married mothers bring in an income that's substantial to taking care of the family. I said this goes far beyond women. It goes to everything that we hold valuable in this state and everything that we're trying to do. And that's important for us. The message that you ladies and ladies and uh, gentlemen and others are sending today is that Louisiana is ready to move our state forward. You cannot have disparate treatment in any way against one gender or one race and be whole, and be whole as a state. And you can't offer your best in economic development to any company or anyone that's seeking to come here if we have the highest gender wage gap in the nation. You just can't do it. And so I told them, I think that over the last 8 to 12 years that I've been working this issue, we've tried all we could to bring uh, development to this state. But the one piece that was missing, regardless of how much money we put on the table, is our inequities in pay. And companies recognize that. And women who work for those companies who are CEOs and uh, chief financial officers and, and vital to those companies recognize that. And that becomes so very important. Who wants to come to a state where as you, when you come as a woman, you know that you're already going to have a lower pay than a man, regardless of what job you do or how much you perform and what, what you do to give your all every day? This is a broader message. I would hope, you know, a lot of people say this is about women. No, 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 this is about family. This is about economic development. And this is about Louisiana moving forward. I tell them that anyone that thinks that this is a women's issue hadn't looked at the paychecks of their daughters and their mothers and their sisters lately to see what Louisiana does to them. So I am so elated to join in the fight um, and to continue to fight. I'm, I'm so supportive of J.P. Morrell, Senator J.P. Morrell's bill, continuously advocating it. I'm all around the floor in a very kind and joking manner until the day that bill comes to the floor saying, are you going to support your wife? Are you going to support your daughter? You know, and, and that's what we have to ask them. Are you going to support the children that live in that house? Because when women are paid more, we're able to support those children. We are able to support your grandchildren. We're able to support our sisters, our brothers. And I said, are we really ready to support Louisiana as a whole and support the companies and show the companies that we're uh, attempting to attract that we're serious about economic development? Because that's what it comes down to. And that's been my new message. When I first got on board, um, Pamela, you know this, back in like 05, I kept saying, how could you do women like this? What are you doing? Are you crazy? And then just major revelation. How could you do our economy like this? How could you do our families like this? How are mothers working two jobs as single mothers to survive while their children have no tutor at home at night? And then they complain about what's happening in the school system and a high crime rate of our juvenile system. But we're forcing mothers every day to work two jobs to make ends meet that should be at home with their children because the one job they have should be sufficient if they were being paid equal wages. This is a major step. And I apologize for being late. As you know, we're pulled in so many directions, but nothing more important than pay equity and equity of all citizens. We fight for that every day in every area. And at the end of the day, we even have to look at what our women are being paid in this capital. Talking about that the other day to make sure that there are no wage gaps. When I came here, I think I came as an experienced attorney making $38,000 a year in 2005. Had to continue my private practice because, you know, I like shoes and clothes. I couldn't survive off of it, <laughs> right? And so, um, uh, and just became a partner in a law firm and still checking my own salary. Still making sure that the contract is not unbiased to me, but I have such a great law partner who said, look, I, I have a wife who works at this firm. I truly believe that everyone should have an opportunity to be successful. 
But that doesn't happen in every firm you go to. And everyone doesn't have state representative or senator in front of your name where they see more value in us than they should because we're still women fighting on the front line. And we have to recognize that. And this law is going to hold all of us accountable. Big companies, small companies, those who uh, at, at the state level employ, it's going to hold all of us accountable to just do the right thing. Uh, the reporter said, what, how do you think women are going to feel? I said, I think we're going to be so um, busy celebrating the obvious that we should have celebrated years ago than the focus on inequities of the past. I said, I think women are ready to move forward from this issue. We have worked hard. We've never stopped working hard. I said, simply put, we're going back to our jobs tomorrow and continue to do what we do once the bill passes because that's the type of commitment we've had to this state, to our families, and to our friends. We add value to society, and with that being said, we must be paid the same as men. We must be paid the same for the same job, for the same commitment. Sometimes we work harder, and we're still paid less. I remember my mom telling me, you, you're a double minority in Louisiana. You're a female and you're black. So you're going to have to work twice as hard, be twice as smart, and be twice as committed to get the same pay. I remember calling and said, I've worked twice as hard, I've been twice commi as committed, and I've worked longer hours, and I'm still underpaid. That is the reality of Louisiana without this law. The nation knows it. Louisiana knows it. We've, we've ignored it too long as members of this legislature. The bill has fast, passed, uh, failed to pass too many times. This year has to be our year to right that wrong. So I am going to be around in my red <laughs> and still trying to uh, pass subject matter bills on us, uh, other subject matters and kill some. So I'm headed to a committee now to hopefully pass a bill. <laughs> but I thank you so much for your commitment to this state, for your commitment to children. Uh, this issue is so widespread for your commitment to family and just to moving Louisiana forward economically. Thank you. A lot of people say, you know, these are modern times. How big of an issue is it really? Like, how big of a discrepancy is the pay issue for those that may not quite fully understand? Mm -hmm. It is a very big deal, especially here in Louisiana. Louisiana is number 51, dead last in the nation. That is counting D.C. We are number 51 on the bottom. A, on average, a woman makes only 65 cents to every dollar a man makes in Louisiana. And in some parishes, it is even lower. The lowest parish is West Carroll, who only makes 49 cents to a dollar that a man makes. How can the public get involved? How can other women or even some men get involved? Most women, most women are not even aware that they make only 65 cents on the dollar, which is below the national average, and they're afraid to say anything to their employer. But so many families in this state are being raised by single parent, and these are the women that have to work two jobs just so they can make enough money to support their children. And by working two jobs, these children are home without uh, a mentor, a mother, a family person. And we want to know why our crime rate is up. If we could just go on a job and make what we should be fairly paid, we might be able to go home and support our children and do what we need to do to keep them home. Is there anything else you want to add? No, just hope that we pass this bill today in the Senate and it goes to the House. We're hoping that everybody in Louisiana will know that we are second-rate citizens and we hope to become people and make the same decent wage that we deserve. We intend to lobby as long as it takes to change this. And we feel good about it this year. Uh, we have a wonderful, supportive governor, first time ever that we've had a, a governor who actually is this supportive and actually helps us with um, all of our efforts. Like I said, he was just our speaker earlier and he is probably our most ardent supporter and that has made a tremendous difference. And where can people get more information and find out how that they can get involved? Oh yes, they can contact me at uh, Camille Moran, C-A-M-I-L-L-E, M-O-R-A-N at gmail.com 
or they can call me on my cell at 318-471-1740. And they can also uh, contact uh, us at our corporate offices of AAUW in Washington, D.C., and uh, we have a lot of information going on nationally and in the state. Um, we have Smart, Start Smart, which is our wage project uh, that we, we help women to learn to negotiate their salaries. We also do self-pay audits for uh, businesses, and there's just many things that we can help uh, with the wage gap, um, help educate and train people to, to better become more educated and learn more about the issue.